Hey guys, so uh, this is just a quick little tutorial on uh, Legion TD, uh, mainly just uh, making this for some friends that uh, kind of play the game a little bit, but just, you know, don't have the gist of it down just yet, uh, so this isn't really meant to be for people who are looking to better improve their gameplay with the game, or... Uh, it's not really a professional video because uh, I'm in no way a professional at this game. It's just kind of like what I've learned from it that I'm sharing with everybody. Uh, so just going to kind of go over the basics here. So let's begin. So the objective of Legion TD is you're uh, usually 4 and 4. Um, the objective is to get your uh, waves of creatures that are sent to the enemies uh, to get to the king or the enemy king, and for the enemy king to get destroyed. Uh, each team's uh, builder is equipped with making towers in order to defend against the enemy waves, uh, and each team can also send in certain waves uh, specific units that can buff the waves in order to, uh, you know, better infiltrate the king. Um, on top of that, each uh, builder is equipped with a heal to heal the king, uh, you got several main buildings. You got the town hall here, uh, which can increase your lumber production, which I'll get to in a second um, on what that is for. Uh, you got two different barracks. One doesn't become available till after 10, though. Uh, these are used to send the units uh, on enemy way or on each wave. And you got farm, which uh, like in normal Warcraft 3 increases uh, you know the amount of units you can create um, so there are several different waves you want to send units and you usually want to send together as a team on uh, this one it's just kind of a tutorial so uh, it's me versus another person so it's not uh, gonna be as realistic um, when you send units though it's uh, costing gold and lumber it's just gonna cost lumber uh, so you want to make wisps and also get lumber upgrades uh, each you know certain levels in order to increase your lumber production to send more units because that's ultimately going to uh, destroy the king so uh, and you know that's that's just the gist of it uh, and I'm gonna kinda go over my strategy as the game goes along so uh, but that's that's just the basics so far and I'll explain more as the game goes so here we go um, Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm starting off with the first unit. You basically have, uh, you know, certain units that cost a certain amount. And a lot of people will go with the, you know, most expensive ones first, which was better in the earlier versions, but this is the latest version. And what I found works best is making the cheapest unit. Uh, several of them and creating several of them so uh, that's what I did here so as you can see I made peewees and I upgraded them into veterans uh, the veterans really nice because um, he has a chance of finishing off an enemy with a single blow and the lower his HP gets the faster his attack speed goes uh, he also has a good chunk of health here and his armor type is pretty good against most waves except for normal um, which Right now is only level 2, so it's not that bad. Uh, you want to make sure you make enough units just to, you know, survive each wave. And you also want to make sure that you don't overspend on your units, because like I said, you still want to have some lumber cost. Uh, so usually my strategy is, you know, spend all your gold the first round just to get some good, decent units. Uh... I found the best starting units to make mass amounts of, like I'm doing, is this one Peewee and upgrading it into Veteran, and also the Proton, which you just make a whole bunch of Protons, like two rows of them, and then you upgrade them later as the round goes along. Uh, also for level 1, you want to send the first unit, which is the Hermit, costs 100 Lumber, uh, it just, it, it kind of harasses the enemy early game. Uh, if they're not ready for it, they're going to leak a whole bunch, and uh, you know they're going to lose a whole bunch of gold 
uh, because enemies that they don't kill that goes to the king not only does it damage their king and you know they may have to spend lumber uh, to you know upgrade their king but it also makes it so that they lose all that gold because their units didn't kill it uh, so that's it so far as you're gonna see uh, what I try to do is before level 3 I try to have 3 wisps and 1 lumber upgrade and then as the level goes along I try to keep a wisp ahead of the level so for example if it's level 4 I'd be 5 and 1 uh, by level 5 you want to be 5 lumber and uh, 5 or 3 uh, lumber upgrade uh, so you kind of get a better state if you look on the right here um, you can see the players and their score uh, value is how much uh, you know you spent on your units what the cost value was uh, your income is every time so no reason you want to send units but you only want to send them on certain waves so it's more effective is you get five percent income uh, from the units you send so what they cost lumber wise 5% of that goes to your gold cost at the end of the level. So you want to send, you know, before the level ends uh, for the next level. In this case, since it's level 1, I sent before the level started. So by level 2, I'm going to get that income back. Especially if it reaches their enemy king. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So here's uh, lumber. So the first number is the amount of wisps you have. So I just have one right now. And the zero is the upgrade for lumber, which increases the amount that the wisp produces. So uh, we're going to start with this round. We're going to see how this goes. I just want to show you how like overpowered this first unit is. So uh, the enemy I'm going against had the same strategy I did, which was sending a hermit. It's a good strat. Uh, hermit provides health regen for the units it's with, but my units are just tearing through them. So it's kind of uh, kind of pointless that they sent it if anything they're giving me gold because when I kill that hermit it's gonna give me some extra gold but uh, kind of the same thing happened on their end they killed my hermit and they didn't leak so we're kind of even at this point but as you can see level one went pretty well and as you can see, I'm also producing some more wisps. So I'm trying to go uh, with three wisps before level three. Um, I don't have enough value to get the lumber upgrade yet. It requires 600. So uh, the next thing I'm doing is getting myself to 600 value. Uh, the first lumber cost upgrade costs 60 gold and 60 lumber. Um, and just remember, people get, get a little scared with you know spending lumber and gold on you know the lumber upgrade but you want to make sure you do that because the earlier you get that done the more you can send on the levels it really matters where you can win the game um, speaking of sending on certain levels uh, the main levels you want to send on is level three uh, you want to send a fur bulg on level three uh, that increases the armor of the scorpions which uh, gets sent um, and, and FYI as well, if you press enter, do dash info space in the level, it'll tell you what, you know, that wave consists of, like, for example, right here, uh, you know, what their attack type is, what their armor type is, etc. Um, level three just tends to be a little more difficult than the first two, so that's why you send on that level. Uh, you also want to watch your enemy, uh, if they leak. You want to see what type of towers that you know the other enemy has, what they're weak against, what level you should send on, um, and if they're leaking a lot on certain levels, it usually indicates like, hey, they're weak against that attack type. So you might want to send on the levels with that attack type. So, for example, uh, people send five. Uh, it's it's not normally sent, but if you realize they're weak against magic, level five is magic damage. So you could send uh, some hermits on level five and uh, a Kodo or a commander in order to increase the magic units damage um, level seven is another level you want to send that's just a lot of high damage pierce targets so uh, that's really a good way you know to end the game early 
And then ultimately level 10 is when you want to send as many units as possible, which uh, I'll get to, you know, that when we get there, like what I like to send. But uh, for now, as you can see, um, I'm keeping true to my word with how I'm doing my lumber. Uh, I'm staying a level ahead, so it's level 3, some level, you know, got 4 wisps. And uh, before level 5, I want to try to be at 5 and 3, or uh, 6 and 3. And I got enough units where I'm upgrading them here, so they're just swarming the enemies and, you know, making sure I don't leak. Uh, in the event that you do leak, which it happens, sometimes you get shitty towers, because with profit you get random, random towers each time you play. It's not the same. Uh, you want to upgrade your king at the town hall. Depending on what your king's abilities are, depends on what stats you want to go for. So, uh... For example, uh, I got Immolation, and those are really good against melee waves. And if you leak on melee waves, you want to get your health and health regen up, since Immolate's pretty much going to take care of the melee units. Uh, health also makes it so you know your king lasts a little bit longer than uh, the other enemy king. You know it's going to take more hits. Uh, if you have Shockwave, which is really good against like. Uh, taking care of units before they reach the king um, or taking out ranged units you kinda wanna go for attack and like maybe health regen uh, and then for stomp which is good against melee as well mainly just for stopping their attacks and doing a little bit of AoE damage uh, you're still gonna wanna kinda go like health and health regen uh, you can kinda even out the stats if you want it's really up to your play style but uh, in a 1v1 like this, I'm kind of concentrating on uh, mainly health to outlast my opponent. Because I think I'm going to leak 10, which ends up happening. And uh, I withstand them, and it, it works pretty well. So as you can see, I'm still upgrading my, my units. They're doing pretty good. I uh, got a decent amount of them. Doing a little bit better than uh, my enemy here. And uh, I'm keeping my lumber upgraded. So as I said before... Five and trying to get five and three. Uh, ideally, by level seven, you should be like nine and five, or if you're doing really well, nine and six. Uh, you can keep upgrading your lumber if the level keeps going after that. You can try to get to the max, which is nine and fifteen. Uh, but generally, you want to try to end before ten, which uh, can happen a lot. So, so as you can see here, I kind of like to make a design with my units. Uh, but I felt like this was enough veterans to kind of get the job done. So uh, I kind of stopped there. Um, I don't have enough gold to build enough units yet. And my income's still kind of low, so I'm not getting that bonus uh, gold each round. Uh, but my strategy basically here is to send for seven. Uh, see how they you know, handle that wave and decide to send from there. Uh, if you notice that they leak 7 and their king gets beat up pretty good, you actually want to send 8 uh, before 10. That kind of pressures them a little bit more to waste their lumber on uh, the king, uh, potentially waste their heal before level 10, which pretty much screws them over. And uh, it also gives you more gold uh, before level 10 starts to make more units, which, you know, can slow down level 10 uh, reaching your king before your enemy does or potentially surviving from it so alright so as you can see before level 7 I'm trying to get to 9 and 5 lumber uh, my lumber score is getting pretty good uh, my gold is staying pretty steady so it's pretty nice uh, and my food's doing well as, uh, as well uh, I tend to only upgrade my farm when I'm like, you know, if I'm doing really well and I feel like I'm making a lot of units, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, maybe if I'm like one or two food away from the max. Because it costs 24 gold and 80 lumber, which can kind of be steep early on. So uh, you don't want to do, you don't want to upgrade your farm early. So, uh, so... As I said, I made a whole bunch of the veterans, and I decided to make other towers. Uh, you generally want to make like one buff tower if you have it. So I made a highborn, 
which uh, she provides a frost shield uh, for one of the melee units, which kind of helps a little bit. And she also puts a AOE heal slash damage uh, area of effect, which is uh, pretty nice. And then after that, I decided to make my max unit towers, which is uh, Hades, which is pretty freaking awesome because he summons a whole bunch of units and does some decent damage. So, all right, so. When you're sending units to, uh, you want to send on the level before. Just make sure you don't do it too early. If you do it too early, it's going to send on that level, and uh, that's not what you're going for. Just make sure you send before the level ends, so before, you know, all the units are gone. Uh, so as you can see, I started sending around this point for level 7. Uh, for level 7, I decided to send fur bulgs and some blood orcs. Uh, Furbolgs provide plus three armor, doesn't stack. Uh, I made two of them though because in case one dies there's another one up to keep providing the armor for the units. And I also sent uh, a Blood Orc because he does a decent amount of damage, has a decent amount of health. He's really fast so he's going to charge ahead and kind of like take some of the damage and dish out some of the damage as well. So uh, as you can see I made two of the higher units here. And I decided to actually make two Blood Orcs and two Fur Wolves. So in case one of them dies, there's still one left over. Uh, if your unit that you make down here actually reaches the king, you get some bonus gold as well. Not just from the income. So uh, it's a good idea sometimes to make multiples. But uh, yeah. So I also graded my farm here because it's like two food away from being the max. You don't want to uh, upgrade your farm too late because you might... You know, have the countdown time right here, and your food's maxed out, and, you know, you're pretty much screwed. So you don't want that to happen. But, uh, I'm 9 and 5 at this point. I decided to go 9 and 6, because I'm doing pretty well. And, uh, yeah, my units got sent over, which, uh, ultimately makes them leak. So then I decided to send level 8 as well, which I'll, you know, kind of scribe a little bit better once we get into that. So I'm actually going to speed this up a bit. Just to kind of show that. So I kind of go over here. Look look and see, you know. Because I can tell it that she, or that they leaked. So I got two of my units through, which means bonus gold for me. And as you can see, the king got damaged a bit. is pretty good so yeah see half health they haven't upgraded their king at all yet so I went all right well I'm gonna send for level 8 so uh, for level 8 what I decided to send is generally you just want to send uh, the commanders but I had some extra lumber and I wanted to get some extra gold before 10 so I sent uh, three commanders a hermit for the health regen plus you know level 8's magic damage so if they're weak against magic it's gonna do a little bit more and I also sent some chariots because chariots do double damage against the king, which, like I said, it's going to pressure them a little bit more. Um, I also upgraded my top units here. And, uh, yeah, I only got 33 gold. Um, generally, what I like to do is, you know, at this point, make the top units I can, upgrade them. And if I have any leftover gold, generally before level 10, I try to spend on any unit I can, just so there's like, you know, a little more damage, a little more, uh, a little more units just to slow level 10 down for reaching my king, so I have a higher chance of living. But as you can see, I'm 9 and 6 now. My score is pretty good. Uh, I got a lot of lumber. It's not even level 10 yet. I'm already at 372 lumber, which is, uh, pretty good. So I'm going to speed this up a bit again. Obviously I do pretty good here. They didn't send anything, so... It's pretty good clean up my part. But they ended up leaking a little bit because I sent all that stuff to them, so... Uh, their king's already kind of weak. Which uh, forces them to kind of upgrade in their king a little bit. That's wasted lumber, so they're not going to be able to send as much for 10. Uh, also potentially wasting a heal here, which it does. 
and that was their only heal since it's one versus one. So, uh, level 10, you know, I realize, hey, you know, even if I leak, um, as long as I can heal my king in time, I should be fine. Uh, and win. Which, uh, is basically the outcome here. Uh, which is what you're going for. Um, normally, if you had, you know, if you had a teammate, or, you know, more than one teammate, it doesn't matter if you leak for level 10, as long as they can hold out, uh, you'll be okay. Uh, you generally want to work together as a team. Like, you, let's say they, they leak level, I don't know, let's say they leak level 7, but your team doesn't want to send 8. Don't send, you know, just by yourself. It's not going to be as effective. So you want to send together. Because uh, as you can see, the units I'm sending, uh, imagine like multitudes of those getting sent to the enemy team. It, it's just a lot better and things go a little bit faster. So um, as you can see here, level 9 is about to start and I only sent one unit. I'm just using this as a marker so I know when to send. Uh, so when this guy disappears, that's when I know, hey, I can put my units down uh, to be set for level 10 before the level starts. That way I get more time to make more units. But I got I got 1,700 lumber here. Um, I decided to use most of it into sending my units. So uh, I sent a whole bunch of buff units to buff the Draenei Chieftains, which is for level 10. Uh, sent some Blood Orcs. Just to, you know, speed ahead and kind of absorb some of the damage so the Draenei Chieftains can live. Uh, and I also sent more Chariots, you know, in case that one of them gets through. They're going to help the Chieftains burn the King down faster. Uh, once, I, once I spend most of my Lumber, though, I decide, hey, I'm going to save some of that Lumber to up my King. Uh, since I have Immolation, I'm going Health here. Uh, but, you know, even if I had Shockwave or... War Stomp, I would have gone with health anyways, just to uh, last longer and, you know, ultimately win. But yeah, I got a pretty good send here. You know, I got, what, three, three Blood Orcs, three Fur Bulgs, four war, uh, Commanders, and two Chariots. That's uh, definitely going to decimate them here, so... Um, See, they're kind of struggling since I sent earlier. It's, you know, they weren't able to get all that gold to make more towers to burn through the wave faster. So, I'm already at an advantage. Uh, it's pretty good. So, I'm going to speed through here, guys. Just to kind of show you the outcome. Because it's kind of the same of what I was going through earlier. Or what I was saying. You know, I'm upgrading my king. Or I got a good send going. So I know I'm going to leak here. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Alright. So I cleared out most of the units. But I realize I'm going to leak here. So I keep getting the health back up. Uh, but as you can see I'm. You know. At least holding them off a little bit. Two of them are slowed. Uh, one of them is pretty damaged. I don't expect to clear this out just by myself with my king upgraded the way he is, but I'm just outlasting him at this point. So I'm going to speed it up a bit, just to kind of show you the outcome, because they leaked uh, one more than I did, which means, and they have no heal, which means I'm at the advantage since I have a heal, and they don't. So as you can see, this is a good game right here. So, uh, if you guys have any specific questions or anything, feel free to ask me, and uh, I'll make another video. But this is, this is pretty much it. Hope you, this was helpful, and I hope you guys enjoyed.